Hello, everyone. Welcome back. If this is your first time with us, welcome. Um, we are excited to have you all here today for another episode of Cooking Connected. My name is Jordan. Joining me today is my coworker, Sajwa, and one of our Cooking Matters volunteers, Chef Jeff. Hello. Normally, a Cooking Matters class is an in-person, nutrition-based cooking class that meets once a week uh, for about two hours for six weeks. Classes feature a nutrition educator and a chef that work together to teach our participants a little bit about nutrition and how to make healthy, delicious, affordable meals. Today, we're going to follow that same format, except virtually. Uh, today, Chef Jeff will be walking us through some grilling techniques for some fish and some vegetables. Uh, we will, so we'll be making grilled fish and veggies uh, with a grilled pineapple dessert. Chef Jeff also has a few other extra surprises for us. So we are excited to learn um, about some grilling techniques today. Just like every week, we do have another survey for you all to take. Uh, we love hearing from our viewers. So if you have some time after this video, please go ahead and take our survey. Um, you can find the link to the survey in the description box of our videos um, should be just below. Uh, for these surveys, you will need a program code, which I have right here. This week's program code is E101174. And again, you can find the link for our survey in the description box below our video. Uh, thank you in advance for that feedback. Again, we really appreciate it. It helps us make our videos a little bit better every time um, and helps us to continue this work in our community. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Sajwa and Chef Jeff. Take it away. All righty, thank you so much, Jordan, for the introduction there. Um, like Jordan said, we're gonna be going over some grilling techniques and we've got a grill expert with us today. So we're really excited about that. But before we break out the grills and get started with everything, we do wanna just go over a couple of basics before you do any kind of cooking, whether you're in the kitchen or outside. Um, and you wanna make sure that you've washed your hands um, please make sure that you're washing your hands for 20 seconds, getting in between the fingers like so, around your wrists, underneath your fingernails, all of those spots where germs really like to hide. Um, the other thing you want to do whenever you're going to be cooking um, is to make sure you have a clean and sanitized workspace. So clean, meaning you've removed any visible dirt or debris, anything like that. And then sanitizing, meaning you've used a disinfectant to get rid of any germs or bacteria on your space. And then finally, um, as you guys can see in the chef view, um, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have your mise en place out and ready to go. So we always say having your mess in place with cooking matters. Um, so that means you got out everything that you might need for today's recipe, um, any ingredients, seasonings, oils, anything you can think of, it's a great idea to have those things out and ready to go so you're not fumbling around in your cabinets. Um, today we are going to be working with fish um, and some meats, so you really want to make sure that you uh, are practicing some food safety, and I know Jeff is going to review that for us as we get there. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, everybody, thank you very much. Glad to be here. Got a great team with Sajua and Jordan and my lovely, beautiful wife assistant over here. So we're gonna start off with a grilled Caesar salad, something maybe some of you have tried before, maybe not. We're gonna be using some romaine I have right here and some mustard greens. I'm gonna spray these down and I'm gonna and, and spray the mustard greens and uh, the, I've cut these into like spears these uh this romaine hearts delicious today we're also going to use this italian bread and use this as a crouton i'll just put, brush this with some oil oh, nice. both sides and then we're going to grill some tomatoes and then top it with some shaved parmesan cheese but before we get started we want to season our grill seasoning means we're going to add some oil to it and this is going to help food from sticking especially mm. fish you know flaky fish will stick Lots of, lots of things will stick, but you know, the, the more tender, the more fragile, the protein or the vegetable or fruit, whatever you're going to be using, it's gonna, it's gonna stick. And so what we wanna do is add some oil to it and season it. So what we're gonna do is, and I've seen so many people take a can of oil or spray like this, and they just start spraying the grill itself. 
That's a bad idea, especially when the grill is on, because what's going to happen is it's going to flame up. Mm. Plus, just for another safety pick or topic, try not to keep your can. If you do have aerosol cans, don't keep them so close mm. to the fire. Okay. Yep. I was working in a restaurant one day and somebody had left an aerosol can on top of a four burner stove that was had hot gases coming up. The hot gases expanded inside the can and that thing was exploded and it was loud. Mm -hmm. I was ring, I was, uh, my ears were ringing for like four days. So anyway, it's very, these could be very dangerous. Keep these away from fire and you don't want to spray these in there right now because right. if the fire was off, yeah, you can spray it in there, that's fine. But fire's on, I've got, I've turned the fire on to help clean the grills. They were already brushed. They're clean, they're ready to go. So I'm gonna put my oils over here. So I've got this paper towel and you can use a um, cloth as well, whatever you want to use. I'm gonna add some canola. I'm just gonna use a, just a general all-purpose oil. It might be something really expensive. Okay. So I've, what, I, what I'm gonna do is just try to saturate this paper towel so it, first of all, it doesn't burn. And I'm just gonna go like this and just clean or swipe down the grates. And then keep adding more oil. So all Great tip here, Jeff. I had no idea that this was a step in the grilling process. So I'm glad you're reviewing everything. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really, yeah, it's pretty vital. So anyway, there's that. What I'm going to do is, I've got some, like I said, I've got some croutons. I'm going to get those started first, actually. Okay. Now, can you use any kind of bread with your croutons, or is there a special kind that you recommend? You can use, yeah, you can use any kind of bread, but... You want to use, try to use an older bread try to, and don't use a fresh bread, okay? Mm. I mean, use the, save the fresh bread for today or tomorrow or the next day, whenever you're going to use it. Old bread, stale bread works great for croutons, okay? I love it, yes. So traditional croutons, you, you know, you, you chop them up, dice them up, season them, adding some oil, some herbs, maybe Parmesan cheese, putting them on a baking tray and then putting them in the oven for... 15, 20 minutes, depending on how, what the temperature is, usually at 350 degrees, okay? Mm -hmm. So that way they get nice and toasty and flavorful all around, and then you let them cool. But this is gonna be a grilled crouton, depending on, you know, we want it, we don't want it too soggy, we want it kind of firm so that it holds its, holds its um, shape. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use some olive oil. I'm not sure if you can see this. Yep, we can see ya. Okay, good. So I'm just going to kind of brush it on there like that. Okay. Let's put it right on the, right on the brush. And I'll do both sides and I'll want to sprinkle this with salt and pepper. Of course, you can always mm -hmm. add um, herbs to this, some mm -hmm. basil, oregano, garlic. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I was just thinking that some Italian seasoning might go nice with these croutons. Oh yeah. It's like right. a picture of all of those things. <laughs> guys, this might be a great step for kids who are um, maybe outside in the summertime and you want them to get used to outdoor cooking. Um, they can do things like spreading things on top of ingredients that you're prepping for the grill. Um, of course, within a safe distance, <laughs> but there are still ways to allow your young ones to be involved in the cooking process, even if it's going to be outside. Yep, yeah, those are good, good ideas, getting the kids involved, outdoor activities, especially. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, plus work for the parents, right? <laughs> Heck yeah.
That always helps. Okay, so let's sprinkle this with some salt and pepper. All right. Just one side. And I got some red pepper right here. This, uh, I'm doing this first because it's gonna take longer for this, um, for the crouton to cook. So I'm gonna put it over here. Doesn't matter what side you do. So next I'm going to take, I'm gonna use the olive oil spray and just gently spray this mustard green, okay? And just put it right here. Let's put this over here, maybe. Oh, that's perfect. Is that better for you? Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. So um, he's spraying down. down the romaine lettuce and the mustard green, you said? Yes. Okay. Sweet. And we don't want to keep this on here very long because mm -hmm. we don't want it to burn. We just want to give it some flavor. And we also have some heirloom cherry grape tomatoes. Mmm, the tomatoes on there are going to be nice. And I've saved some of the trimmings right here. And we'll just, we'll just use that up as a base for the salad plate. And at this point, Jeff, um, what temperature is your grill set at? Is it high, uh, medium, low? You know, I wish I could answer that question for you. I really don't know. Oh. I'm just using my hot, my hand to uh, do that. But I think I'm just going to turn it up because right now it's on. Actually, they're on medium on my on the gauges. Okay. About medium. Okay. And then I have. I'm going to save this one up here for medium high, and then these ones for just above medium right here. Okay. Good to know. My head went to temperature degrees so 325 <laughs> degrees i didn't know <laughs> all right this is smelling pretty good so here's my mustard greens i'm gonna put on there oh yeah it was really just a moment on there nice the mustard greens will add some nice spice and kick uh peppery flavor I got some nice marks on here. Mm -hmm. Over here, hot side for a minute. So I'm just going to go ahead while we're waiting for that to finish cooking. I've got some. Parmesan cheese. Oh, that looks good. <laughs> and I've got this dressing. Let me shake it up one more time. Just a basic, let's say it's a low cal dressing uh, with anchovies, Caesar dressing. Um, I like to make mine with uh, yogurt and mayonnaise to cut down on the calories. Oh, love that. And I make it a little bit thinner than most, um, most Caesar dressings. They can be pretty thick. Mm -hmm. So that's ready. Add some tomatoes. Go ahead and finish the Parmesan cheese. Mmm, freshly grated. Can you see that? Yeah, that looks great. <laughs> okay, so that's that. And crouton. Okay, so there you go. There oh, wow. Salad. 
salad, grilled Caesar salad. Today we're going to be also cooking some squid, grilled squid. You can also top this with some grilled squid or some grilled um, shrimp or leave it like this. That looks pretty good. That looks great. Thank you. All right, so the next thing, we're gonna grill some vegetables. So we've got some fresh broccoli. I love fresh grilled broccoli, especially with lemon juice. Ooh. So, and then topped in or tossed in uh, something like um, olive oil or, or butter and garlic. Flavorful. There's gonna be a lot of nice flavor there with that butter and garlic. Everything in moderation, guys. <laughs> That's right, yeah. And guys, just take note of how organized Jeff is being with the grill today. He's got all of his ingredients out and ready to go. He's got a game plan for what he's gonna be doing today. Um, all of that's going to be really helpful, especially if you're out there in the summer heat and the summer sun. So keep that in mind um, when you're out there grilling. And then keep some beverage with you. Mm. I have some fresh watermelon juice. <laughs> all we did was just put it in the blender and it's so nice and fresh and inviting. Yeah. It's, you know, it's perfect time to be drinking uh, lots of water, but this is yeah. a good time to be drinking watermelon at a good price. Yeah, and watermelon is chocked full of a lot of water in there, so that's a great refreshing tip. So can you, okay, so we've got some, we have the corn, we're, mm -hmm. we're going to do some elotes today, uh, Mexican corn, we've got broccoli, eggplant, some squash, sweet potatoes, asparagus, some tomatoes that have went ahead and kind of made decorative. I did that because mm -hmm. if you want to, you can always fill this with maybe some breadcrumbs and cheese and have that something nice, something different. Jalapenos and some of those, you know, the, those sweet peppers that are out there in all the grocery stores. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave this onion just like that. It looks kind of cool. It, it, the, the flavor of the shell will kind of crisp up. We'll, we'll just peel that right off when it's ready to go. Oh, nice. Oh. When um, I've already done some of these, I've cut these up, cut the, cut down past the, the you know the purple stage down here, and then there's some white, and it's really dense and fibrous. Mm -hmm. So you want to kind of look out for that kind of stuff. So what I hit, what I will do is use my vegetable peeler. I've already done some of these. I'll just use my vegetable peeler and just scrape off this fibrous outer part of the asparagus thought just like that mm -hmm. okay um and you just the only way you can tell is by biting into it if it's ready for you or not so these don't these do not take very long to cook at all okay and we just want them nice and sweet so let me come on over here i'm just gonna go ahead and spray right now i'm just gonna spray these So lay them across this pan right here and just spray them and then cook them. And we can always come back and season them. You can mm -hmm. add you know, salt and pepper, some garlic powder, uh, onion powder, any kind of seasoning, Italian seasonings, any kind of seasonings mm -hmm. that you want that's going to go with the, your other ingredients. Some garlic. I always love throwing garlic in. <laughs> yes, me too. Put the, um, all right, try can you grab the whole one please and show them that. Okay. Get all sides. These will only take about five minutes to cook. That's, so that's not very long. The uh, corn will take a, quite, you know, quite a bit longer, maybe 20 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put the corn up at the top where I have a higher heat. They can always come back and adjust it. 
Is there a difference when you roast the corn with the husk versus without it? Well, you know, I still, with the husks on, I like that. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, so I will cut more of the root end off, chop up the, some of the, uh, the top, and then soak it in cold water for 30 minutes. And I soak these in cold water for 30 minutes as well. That way, the um, um, especially when it's husk on, the water turns into when it you know comes gets hot, it's mm -hmm. going to steam up, mm. and then it's going to the, the husk keeps the steam trapped inside there. So that's how the corn cooks. So it's a, oh. it's very flavorful. So you get more extra flavor from that corn husk, and so yeah. I I like that that approach much better myself. Okay. I'm going to do these cut sides down first for presentation. <laughs> so next we have these sweet potatoes. And these sweet potatoes are delicious, fresh, or cooked or grilled. And you can eat them just like this. They're not related to the potatoes that we grow in North America that we use for French fries. Mm -hmm. These are... You know, they're indigenous to other continents, Asia, Africa. And so anyway, you can eat these just like this. And I've done this because I've made some salads like this okay. before. And what a helpful tip. I didn't know that. <laughs> they're there. I didn't know that either until recently. So my wife told me about that. No. Oh. That's a cool thing about relationships, learning from each other. Mm-hmm. Stars, stars here. <laughs> Was that some squash there? Or? That is, I'm sorry, that's eggplant. Eggplant, okay, sorry. Eggplant wedges. Okay. Oh, nice eggplant. Nice grilled eggplant is yummy. Love that. And then I see you're working the broccoli, of course. <laughs> yeah. Broccoli would take a little bit longer to cook, so I'm going to put it right up here. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more fibrous, guys. I do have some yellow squash, a little bit of Ooh, that, and some peppers. Oh, so those sweet it. peppers on the grill is going to be so nice. <laughs> they are. Yes, they are. Love little peppers. And they add a nice pop of color too to your meal. Um, you know, we like to try to eat the rainbow and adding those mini peppers adds a lot of variety. Um, then you've got the purple from the eggplant, we've got green broccoli, we've got some oranges coming in with the sweet potatoes. We're just all over the rainbow today. That's what we need, yep. Mm -hmm. And this onion there. clean up a little bit. Mm, yep. Definitely so, want to be cleaning your space as you go, you guys. So just in case, so I don't have, I'm, I'm out here on my patio upstairs. And so I don't have a bathroom, a shower or anything like that. I don't, or a hand washing sink. And you typically don't have those at picnics or state parks. I mean, you have to you have to walk somewhere, you know, generally it's a fair distance to go to the porta potty and use the hand washing sink there. So anyway, I always bring a spray bottle of bleach, okay? Oh wow. So this is um this is mostly water. Just follow the instructions on your bleach. And this is probably about maybe a tablespoon of bleach in here, and the rest is water. And so what I will do is I will just squirt my hands, okay? Just like that. I haven't touched anything really potentially hazardous yet, but I will be. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking potentially hazardous foods, we're talking about usually proteins like that are in fish and chicken and hamburgers and steaks and, you know, the lambs, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really important that after you 
handle those meats that you somehow clean your hands. You know, mm -hmm. take along some of those disposable wipes. Those are great as well. I'm using paper towels all the time. I have a little trash can down here to help, you know, keep track of garbage, trash, things like that. There you go. Great tip, Jeff. And that's such a creative way to create kind of an on-the-go hand washing station. I love that idea. I mean, I think that's something smart to take, even if you were just going on a picnic, for example, um, you know, to wash your hands before you're eating or anything that you're going to be doing outside and you're going to be handling food. That's a really great idea. Oh, I forgot to put the, I got some lemons here, lemon wedges. Oh, I'm just going to yeah. go ahead and put these on here too. Grill those. You can always, you know, grill lemon on these vegetables are great, especially with like it asparagus mm -hmm. and with broccoli those are really good and flavorful so i'm gonna go ahead and turn these yeah guys the great thing about um today's episode is we're learning not just how to handle those proteins but also how to handle a lot of vegetables on the grill too I know oftentimes when we go out to grill, the last thing we think about are veg, right? We're thinking about those hot dogs, hamburgers, steaks, all of the major proteins, but you can really have some phenomenal grilled vegetables. Um, and today's just a great example of that. We've definitely gotten our rainbow in um, time and time again, so that's awesome. And there are so many ways that you can get children involved at the stage by perhaps listing the different colors that they're cooking a day, allowing them to brush certain foods with oils, um, you know, at a safe distance, as I mentioned earlier, even allowing your young ones to help you with your mise en place before you start up the grill. All of that can be helpful and it can help them be a little bit more engaged and less nervous about trying new vegetables like eggplant or perhaps the squash and the asparagus, um, which can be a little nerve wracking if you haven't seen them before <laughs> and they're new to you. Um, and then another thing you don't want to forget, you can also grill a lot of fruits, which I know that we're going to be getting to soon, but vegetables, fruits, all of those things, um, they make great opportunities for grilled snacks, and you can get really creative with them too. Looking good, very colorful, right? Mm -hmm. I love the grill lines too, when you do grill them. It looks so good, makes them all the more appetizing, that smoky flavor. I've actually turned my grill up a little bit higher everywhere. So now I'm also a high, medium, high heat. These are cut really thin, these sweet potatoes. So mm -hmm. they cook really quickly. And I still, I don't want them to be too overly soggy. I want them to be holding up like a chip. So these are turning out pretty nice. And you can sprinkle them with salt and pepper or mm -hmm. um, some tagine. Tagine, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Tomatoes are ready to go. Right now we got this, it's looking pretty good, colorful. Yeah, and as far as seasonings, um, there's a lot that you can do with these grilled veggies and seasoning them. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but we are using a light amount of salt today. And also um, Jeff has definitely done a great job of promoting those herbs and spices that you can incorporate into your veggies to add a little bit more of a pop. Um, you know, we mentioned Italian seasoning, um, garlic would be lovely, um, the basic salt and pepper, of course, some other spices, um, I know like cayenne, chile, all those things would be really great on these, depending on what flavor profile you wanna go with. Um, the great thing about grilling is you get that nice smoky flavor anyway. So um, depending on where your taste buds are at, I almost feel like you don't really need a lot of seasonings because you really want to focus on that smoky flavor that you're getting from the grilling technique itself. Yes, that's true. Yeah, 
I like your ideas about the keeping it low salt as well, and then adding the smoke to this flavor. I'm just using propane. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the first propane stove I've ever had. I have it because I was driving to work one day, almost two years ago, there was a cornfield, farmer's cornfield, and out front on the side of the road, it said free stove or free, uh, free um, barbecue. So I, just, I just put it right in my truck right away. <laughs> there you go. Now that it works great. He said, he said, there's no, th the thermometer doesn't work, but everything else works great. And, That's awesome. Uh, I, I'll, I'll go with it. <laughs> That's really great. I love that story. <laughs> Not that proud, I guess. I mean, it's kind of humorous anyway. So. <laughs> okay, so while this is finishing cooking, I think we'll go ahead and start squid. Okay, so we've got the squid, and I'm going to go ahead and start that as well. Ooh, squid, okay. Okay, so squid. So when I was, I went to, um, I went to several high schools, four of them actually, when I was growing up, and one of them was in Madrid, or near Madrid, and so one of our favorite places to go to was this place that served it was squid sandwiches and I love squid sandwiches and you know you can take the rings and fry them if you want to um why am I losing power on my, my computer power's out so um they made these great squid sandwiches uh just very easy just fry the squid or or steam the squid and put it on a like a baguette mm. so anyway i've got these squids they've been cut up this time and they don't take very long at all they're very very quick to cook okay, okay. Perfect. i'm also going so you've just got those on like little skewers okay yeah they're on skewers they won't take very long at all and so i'm going to put this tilapia I mean, pompano. This is a pompano that we got down the street. I live here in Burnsville, and I got this at the Saigon Asian Mart uh, yesterday. And my wife has filled it with some lemon slices, some mint, um, this garlic chive right here, mm -hmm. or maybe it's right here. Very pretty. And uh, cilantro. So this will take a little bit longer than everything else. Usually, maybe nine uh nine minutes on each side mm -hmm. yes and guys even when you're on the grill don't be afraid to bring out your um thermometers to temp your meats um fish i believe that needs to cook till 145 degrees fahrenheit right yes yeah okay right. <laughs> yep so you know make sure you keep that in mind um check those um cook time cook temperature reference points um whenever you're cooking any kind of meats or fish or anything like that, squids, <laughs> all very important. So with that, where did that go to? I'm gonna brush this, got this baguette, or bolillo is what it is actually, I'm sorry. Mm. I'm gonna use the bolillo instead. I'm just gonna spread some mayonnaise on here instead of butter. It spreads really easily as opposed to like cold butter yeah. and it gives us some extra flavor and you know fish goes there's lemon juice inside of mayonnaise and so this will give it some extra mayonnaise flavor this won't take very long at all so i'm just going to put them side down and something important remember i was using my tongs a little, little while ago mm -hmm. to hold that fish right yeah i picked up the fish with this and put it on the grill so now I don't want to touch anything else that I'm not going to eat right away with this, correct? Correct. So, so use your disposable 
um, sanitizer towels if you want to. I'm gonna use my bleach bottle right here. I'm just gonna spray it off over here in this direction. I don't want, I don't want to spray it near any food, okay? Right. Now I'll just wipe it off with a towel. Great catch, Jeff. I'm so glad that you're doing this and showing us how to practice food safety, even at the grill. <laughs> awesome catch. Plus, you know, another thing that I've done before mm -hmm. is you just take your utensil and just stick it in the fire right over the right over the fire itself. OK, yep. the heat will kill the bacteria on your on your tongues. That's the bread. Flip these over. They're juicy. So anyway, I'm just gonna stick my tongs in here, down in there so they get really hot so they can go and move over here and pick up some vegetables and put them on there. Looks like some of the, those more dense vegetables are able to start coming off the grill. And he's just rotating um, the corn and let's broccoli, <laughs> the broccoli as needed, um, flipping them to make sure they get a nice even cook. Let's see the onion is still in there. I like my, my broccoli char broiled really well. <laughs> And we could be doing cauliflower steaks sometime. Oh yeah. That as well. Those are really nice. Cauliflower would be great. Yeah. It's a great idea. Okay, so these look really nice and juicy. Mm. Of course, you can always just eat them right off the skewer. Yeah. You don't need to make a sandwich, right? You <laughs> can just we got this bread right here. Would you be able to show uh, us the uh um, squid in the camera a little closer. Ah. Okay. Oh, so oh, how's that look? Just out of view. This is um, a little bit. There it is. Perfect. Oh, okay, great. Mm, they look nice and crispy on the outside, juicy on the inside. <laughs> yes, and so I'm just going to get some a little bit of lemon, just grilled lemon on here. Mm -hmm. Squeeze that on the squid. Mm. Like I said, you can just leave it like that. Or eat it on the skewer. I'm gonna try one first though. Mm. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Nice, lemony and tender. Oh, mm -hmm. that sounds good. Tastes like Madrid, huh? uh-huh <laughs> that's awesome so that's squid sandwich you can eat that if you want okay so i think this broccoli is about ready. Okay. And this onion in the center. Looks like he's removing the broccoli and the onion. Looks like the eggplant is also coming off at this time. Okay, so that's wow. the grilled platter. Real that vegetable platter right there. Yeah. This would be good with um, an, like an anchovy or anchovy sauce, or even like a Caesar salad. We're mm -hmm. dipping something like that in here would be good, or just lemon juice. Oh, yeah. Whatever yeah. you want to use would be nice. I still have the corn. I'm going to keep that on here. I just want it to caramelize, brown up a little bit. Okay. I'm going to keep the fish on there. Now it's time to do this tilapia right here.
So these tilapia fillets, these are fresh from uh, cubs. So I'm just gonna spray these down. This will make actually two sandwiches, it looks like. I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and top it. This tagine mm -hmm. sauce, this sprinkle right here. It has nice chili flavor, but the cool thing is, is when you, it has lime in there. It's like lime sugar crystals, like the Pop Rocks, you know? So these add an incredible flavor. So I'm just gonna go ahead and flip this onto the grill. Mm. Okay. So and that's our tilapia. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, Chef Jeff, we do have a question. Um, a lot of times fresh fish is a little bit more expensive than buying the frozen. Do you have any suggestions on how we could make a uh, frozen fish maybe taste a little better? Okay. If you're gonna buy frozen, then try to buy the best frozen available. Mm. Okay. If you buy, you know, I bought salmon at walmart and you know a lot of salmon is filled with water and with color to make it look really nice and fresh but when you thaw it out it's going to lose the color it's going to look kind of pale bland and then there's all this water still packed in there so you gotta watch out for that so it's you know it might be a half inch thick when you have it um, frozen but it's going to shrink down quite a bit maybe to um quarter inch or something like that okay and it's just usually when you buy fish frozen like that it's usually the odd pieces mm -hmm. so usually and this the cheaper sections is going to be the tail it gets a lot of movement it's not as much fat back there so that means there's not as much flavor if you're going to buy fish try to buy the center cuts just like anything else or, or you know could be beef or or a, um pork or lamb buy the center cut that's where more, more fat is and the you know, fatty fish is really good for you. Tuna, salmon, um, cod, those are really good fishes for heart healthy people or anybody. Um, but as far as frozen goes, you're not gonna get the, get the good quality um, that you're gonna buy from as fresh. And when you're buying fresh, you can pick out the pieces you want. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you're buying a bag of frozen, individually quick frozen, um, you're just paying for you know, what you pay for. And it's, and it's poor quality. So if you're gonna buy frozen though, go to a really good grocery store, um, Whole Foods I'd, or um, Hy-Vee, something like that, and and shop there for quality as much as you can. One, so one thing I like to do when I do use a frozen fish is um, sometimes I will marinate it um, overnight. And, you know, you can choose <laughs> what your marinade is going to look like. You can find a lot of great recipes online, depending on what flavor profile you're going with. Um, or you can keep it nice and simple, you know, uh, with like, you know, anything really. But um, I, I think marinating can also help um, get a little bit more of that flavor in there. And then also, um, I would definitely be watching for um, when you're cooking it, making sure you're oiling it and keeping it moist and moisturized because without that extra fat, um, it can get a little bit, um, what's the word, tough? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, tough. Especially if you're gonna grill or something like that. Actually, please, oh, I'm sorry. My corn is almost ready. Okay, we're flipping our tilapia here. Oh, I can it's see red, that good color. Nice brown color. Yeah. Put this tilapia over. I love grilled whole fish. I mean, you could use, this is pompano, it comes from around Florida, mostly. Mm -hmm. Um, there's also, you know, you could buy a whole tilapia, you could buy a whole trout, mm. um, some steelhead trout as um, yeah, steelhead trout as well. Those, are, those can be kind of small, very flavorful. So, um, I like whole fish and just so you know, the bones in this, in this fish, the pompano and the, um, 
tilapia, they're large bones, okay? So that you can see them quite readily. It's really easy to pick out. And yeah. the meat is so tender on the tilapia and the pompano, it just kind of flakes up. So this tilapia though is a very firm fish. And so that's really good for grilling just like this. Whereas I probably wouldn't grill pompano. It's more, it's, it's probably a little more uh, flaky. Not flaky mentally, but flaky. <laughs> Okay, so let's move this out of the way so I can make this sandwich. So we have the bottom. I'm just going to go ahead and spread some more mayonnaise on this. Just a little bit more. Just on the bottom, just what you like. And then I do have, I do have, a, I have a digital thermometer. The important thing about thermometers, just like your tool, other tools, you want to have them sanitized before you actually use it on the, what you're going to use it for, okay? So thermometers are for testing the product temperature. So this is mine. It's a javelin, it's a digital one, and it reads really quickly. So all we want to do is insert it. Can I have the other thermometer too, please? In, you want to insert it into oh, the flesh of the meat right about here. The screen. There you go. Oh, we're out of the screen. There you are, right there. Okay. There it is. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so you want to insert the, the, the tip of the thermometer right there. And we want it to read 145 degrees. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. And we want to stick it into the thickest part mm -hmm. because the thickest part, of course, is going to take longer to cook. Right now we're about 138 degrees. You know, you can test several sections. Whoops, that one says 160. So that's really cool about these digitals they react really quickly mm -hmm. whereas the probe i'll show you that one in a second this is so this fish is ready that way and so is that one they're both reading about 149 degrees so i'm gonna go ahead and finish this sandwich up. do the digital thermometers require any calibration at all or i i don't i don't know if you can calibrate it but i'm going to show you how to calibrate Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me just finish this one sandwich up. Oh yeah, I'm gonna. So I'm gonna come back with some. Instead of using, you know, lettuce on here, I'm just gonna quickly spray this um, some more mustard greens to give it some extra pop. Okay. On this sandwich, do something different. I've never tried it before, but let's let's try it. Give some it a go. <laughs> let's go for it. Let's get this. So got that going. I've got some tomato slices right here. I could grill the tomato slices as well. I like it. So anyway, this will look really nice on there. Well, that's nice and juicy cool. Roma tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Let's put this leafy mustard green on here just for a little bit. So we've got that. Oh, a slice of cheese. Let me have a slice of cheese, please. Put that right there. This is some Gouda. Oh, yeah. Just, just what I had in the house, so I thought I'd just use this one. So then I also made some guacamole. I'm going to put this on the top. And I just, I'm going to grab a lime and just squeeze some lime juice on this guacamole as well for some late freshness cilantro. What's that sound? All right, thank you. So I'm gonna squeeze some lime juice on here. And I'm gonna add some fresh cilantro. Mm. 
Oh, it smells so good. Love cilantro, man. <laughs> yeah, me too. It has so much flavor and freshness. Oh, so anyway, so there's a tilapia sandwich. Oh my. With grilled mustard. Like I said, we could have grilled, lightly grilled those tomatoes. You can do that if you want to. Mm -hmm. And to accompany this, of course, yeah, we can always use some of these. Beautiful. Sweet potato wow. fries or sweet potato chips that we just made. And then we have this elote. And I've got some, tried to, this is just a mixture of um, sour cream, mayonnaise, and some milk. I'm just going to spread it on there. You can drizzle on there, whatever you want to do. Makes some nice flavor, and it's hot. So then I'm going to add some cilantro to this as well. Mm. And some more lime juice. And then Parmesan cheese. Oh, yum. I didn't, I was, you can use, because they make a Mexican kind of Parmesan cheese. I couldn't find it at the store, but this would be good. It's very similar to dry, kind of a crumbling cheese. So I just put this on here as well. So anyway, there's a nice summer sandwich right there. That's nice. And the last thing we're going to do is this fish. Out of the way. My plate. Let me get a, grab a plate. Yep. That there for a minute. And grab my thermometer and test the temperature of this pumpkin out. Still a little bit underdone that side. This is reading 146 on this side. So it's about ready. So anyway, what we would do is just normally we would just put the Put the uh, fish right on this plate and we made we went to asia this time and this is a dipping sauce um they don't use i don't really i don't think they use like tartar sauce over there so this is a mixture of soy sauce uh, vinegar fish sauce some crushed peppers mm -hmm. um some crushed red peppers it's got um ginger some grated ginger in there as well so it's a, packed with a lot of flavor. So we get a, and this right here is shredded daikon oh. and shredded um, papaya. Oh, yum. So it's nice and fresh and fruity mm -hmm. and very crisp and light, okay? Mm -hmm. So you get filled up over those Asian countries. You definitely get filled up, but you're not full, okay? Sure. It's, it's kind of a difference there, Could you which have... helps to lead to um, um, obesity, mm. I think. You know, you, be, you just want to keep eating and eating. But, you know, after eating this meal with some what, some white rice and some other grilled vegetables, I think, with the grilled vegetables we have, it'll be a nice summer meal for you, with, especially with this light um, dipping sauce that you have. Could you explain to us what daikon is? Daikon is a radish. It's a white tubular radish. Okay. And it is, I mean, they vary in size. They could be the size of a carrot or they could be the size of your arm. Ooh. Okay. They vary in size. And so I don't need the size of my arm, daikon. But I like it fresh. They're they're really good. You can you can shred them, you can dice them, you can um, cut them into sticks forms, and you can put them on sandwiches like the banh mai sandwich for Vietnam. You can um, add them into salads, you can pickle them. There's so many things that you can do with daikon. Those are very flavorful. They're not real hot. Actually, they're quite mild for a radish goes, okay? Mm -hmm. And then Asian countries, especially like in China, they make many decorations with 
the daikon, mm -hmm. like uh, chrysanthemum flowers, oh. you know, stuff like that. Yeah, they're amazing. That's it's really quite so incredible cool. what they do. Let me check the temperature on both sides again. And my dad taught me to eat. First thing we would eat on a whole fish is the cheeks. Yeah. We would eat the cheeks first. They're right below, you know, around the, you know, right below the eyes, of course. And they're so nice and tender. There's so much fat around them as well. Mm. So that's what we were taught to eat was, was the cheeks first. Guys, notice how Jeff is temping both sides of his whole fish today. So remember to do that when you are temping your fish to 145, both sides. Do we still need a few minutes on that guy? I can do a little nutrition. <laughs> So we might need just a few more moments on the fish. Um, and while we wait for that, I kind of wanted to talk to you guys really quickly about eating in season. Um, so eating in season basically means that you're eating fresh foods that are being harvested right now, not halfway around the world and then shipped to you. Um, so it means it's closer to home. It really helps with sustainability and it supports the local, local farmers in your area. Um, so a couple of reasons why it's good to eat in season is one, it saves you money. Um, it costs a lot more to transport foods from around the world. So for example, in January in Minnesota, we have snow coating the ground. So it's not likely that there are strawberries growing, um, though you can still get them, you'll be getting them shipped from elsewhere. And it can be a lot cheaper um, to eat them when they're actually in season, like now during the summer, um, where you're not having to deal with the transportation or the refrigeration and all of those different costs that go into our food. Um, your food may taste better. Um, the reason being is food grown and picked at their peak um, typically tastes the best. Um, you can compare the taste of a strawberry in May to the strawberry in January and you are going to notice the difference. Uh, so that's one reason, another reason why eating in season is also great. And then finally, you get more nutrients from your food. So produce starts to lose its nutrients after being picked. And when it's having to be transported after, I mean, um, for long periods of time, that's more nutrients that's being lost over that time. So the longer that it's being transported or sitting in the store, the more nutrients are lost. So how do you know um, what's in season and you know that kind of stuff? Well, we actually have quite a few different resources for that eating in season, and you can easily find that information online depending on where you're located and what's in your region. Um, I actually have a chart that I can put in the description box of this video that shows um, the seasons of different fruits and vegetables and when they typically grow. Um, and you're just gonna wanna check that out. And depending on what month you're watching that video, watching this video, you can see what's in season um, for this time. You can also visit your local farmer's market and you'll see the foods that are grown closest to home. And of course, it's being picked right now, so it's definitely gonna be in season. And then finally, look at the stickers um, and the signs in your stores. So stores oftentimes will sticker what country or what state the fruits or vegetables were grown in. Um, so that's gonna be a really helpful indicator of whether it's in season or whether it was grown in your area. You can also ask the produce manager questions if any fruits and vegetables were grown at nearby, new, nearby farms. Um, and then also I noticed that things that are in season oftentimes will be on discount. So back to the strawberry example, in January, those strawberries are gonna be a little bit more expensive than they will be in May when there's an abundance of strawberries everywhere. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Um, but even during the winter time when, you know, our um, farmers aren't flourishing, the snow is covering the ground. You can always buy fruits and vegetables in other forms such as canned or frozen. And that's a great way to continue to incorporate fruits and vegetables into your diet throughout the year. Um, also try looking at recipe substitutions. Um, recipes are guidelines. 
So it's a really great opportunity for you to get creative as we see Chef Jeff is, has done for us in our videos. Um, there are lots of ways that you can tweak and modify recipes according to what's in season and according to what you like to taste. And then um, finally, you can always um, buy fruits and vegetables in bulk when they are in season and store them in a variety of different manners, perhaps pickling them, jarring them, um, freezing them. There are so many different things that you can do. And that's a great way to also save money because they are gonna be a bit cheaper when they are in season. So I see here that Jeff has taken out our fish. Um, he's coated it with that lovely sauce that he mentioned with the ginger, the daikon, the soy, and all those tasty ingredients. And I think he's gonna show us how to plate it too. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it like that. Okay. You can eat, I mean, you can just dig right in, use a fork maybe if you want to, or just dig in and grab some, use your chopsticks. And what you can do is um, use this, just dip your fish in the sauce. Mm, nice. Oh, so good. <laughs> wow. I love it. Believe me, I'm a big tartar sauce guy. I love mayonnaise, mm. but this is so nice and fresh and, and cool and crisp. One last thing real quickly. I almost forgot about it actually was the, um, Grilled pineapple, so I'll quickly get this going. I got this pineapple. I made melted some butter. Let me put this, let me put this over here somewhere. Anyway, I've got this pineapple. I've shaved the outside, took out the core, and this we can hold on to with the pineapple after it's cooked. We're not going to really grill that part. I'm going to brush this. Are you just using a canola oil there, Jeff? Or this what? is butter and butter. brown sugar. Okay. Oh, yum. Yum. Kind of, I made this 45 minutes ago. It's kind of, kind of gotten sticky, and I think I kind of want that. I want it sticky <laughs> with a surprise ending. I want it to caramelize. We don't want to cook it really. We don't want it to get soggy anyway. And so I'm just going to put it on the, the grill right there. Let's keep going around, doing the rest of them. This is a really fun grilled pineapple treat. Um, you know, we oftentimes leave the fruits out of the grill equation too. And there are a lot of fruits that go well with that nice smoky flavor that the grill can give. And, you know, it's just a really fun summer addition. And I especially like how you left the uh, tops of the pineapple on there. Very creative, visually appealing. Um, the kids are really gonna like to see that. It's gonna make it all the more fun. Yeah, these should not take maybe 10 minutes at the most to cook, I think, depending on the heat. So I've kind of got mine up to pretty high heat right now. I just want to mark them for present for today's class. And so just to show you what they, what they can look like and just something different. Something nice and fresh like the watermelon juice. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go ahead and, cut, and just close that for right now. Let that cook on that. Let that cook for about two minutes. I can smell the, um, actually, I can smell the um, brown sugar. <laughs> Gotta watch out for right there. Is, so far, it's still looking good, but I can, the sugar is definitely melting on the grill. So watch out for that kind of stuff. Um, it's, and, you know, burnt sugar does not taste good and it doesn't smell good and it's very hard to clean up. So,
One more plate. So there are quite a few different fruits that you could actually grill, right? I'm thinking pineapple, obviously, we're working on that today. <laughs> but watermelon would be nice too um, to grill. I've heard of that. I'm trying to think what else would be good. Mangoes, if you slice that up, that would be tasty. Um, what other items might be good to grill? Oh, apples, definitely pears. Oh, oh you know, those... pears would be lovely. Mm. Yes, apples would be great too. Oh, peaches, definitely. Oh my gosh. Oh, yes. Peaches and nectarines. We forgot about the peaches, <laughs> the pitted fruit. That that would be yummy. Yep. And I could see the grilled apples coming into play, you know, in the fall when we're all going to the apple orchards and we're trying to figure out what to do with all the apples we picked. <laughs> Apple cider, grilled apple, apple pie. <laughs> yeah, wrap that, you know, cut the apples in half, wrap them in foil with some butter and some brown sugar, you mm. know, or any of those other fruits do the same thing. I have seen one guy on TV a while back, he, he made a baked Alaska with the pineapple. Oh, so yeah. what he did was he cut it in half, scooped out the, the pineapple itself, um, and then he folded in some, I think he folded in some, he whipped some egg whites and folded in the pineapple with that. And then he had a really nice pile of egg whites, you know, meringue. Mm -hmm. And then he put it into the his mm -hmm. grill and then oh, covered wow. up for, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. And it came out, it was all nice and brown. Really oh, nice. Yum. So these are cooking pretty nicely. Like I said, I don't want to cook them really too much. Not sure how this is going to turn out. I, I'm not sure. I just, I don't know. I thought about, I probably need some more cereal or more, or more brown sugar. I thought this would be kind of cool just to quick press this cereal into it and it'll stick. And, it's, you know, some parts it is, but it kind of looks. Or if we looks, crush the cereal, I wonder if it could help. Pardon? If you crush the cereal, do you think that would you know, be maybe so? That was size idea, actually. Oh. <laughs> and so I should have listened to you guys. But anyway, so for something different. And then you, of course you can, you know, you got your hand, your handle right here. Mm. Mm. Perfect. Mm -mm. That's yummy. Nice and sweet, warm. Yeah. It's cook, it's warm, okay? We don't want to overcook it. It's delicious. <laughs> and juicy. Awesome. There we go. <laughs> well, thank you, Chef Jeff. That is incredible. You've gone through quite a few things. We're going to list them in the description box um, below for all the different um, things that you've created for us today and all the awesome tips. We really appreciate your expertise on this matter today. Well, please like us and tremendous amount of applause for. Uh, Jordan and Sajiwa, you guys did great. Appreciate all of your help, your constructive criticism. And viewers, please, if you have any questions or if there's something, some topic that you want us to cover, please let us know. We'd be happy to help you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Chef Jeff, for those amazing demonstrations um, and this very special grilling technique, Cooking Connected. Very fun. So. <laughs> One more thing before we go today, please don't forget to take our survey, um, which is in the description box of our video. Again, you will need a program code and which I'll show right here. Again, today's program code is E101174. Um, and again, that survey link is in the description box of our videos. But with that, we're gonna go ahead and let you go today. Uh, we will see you all again, hopefully Thursday at 2 p.m and uh, for another episode of Cooking Connect. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day. Bye, Bye thank you.